Hello, hello, everybody. It's 7.03 a.m. Central Time on the 5th of February, 2023. It's Sunday morning here in the United States. Hope you are doing well. We are here to do a earthquake update. I'm actually recording this, so we'll get this uploaded over on YouTube once I'm done live here on Twitch. Let's get a display capture turned on and show you what we're looking at here. If you're new here, I'm using the program Earthquake 3D. Don't get anything for recommending it, but I would recommend you use something like it. Shows us multiple feeds, uh, USGS and EMSC out of Europe, for instance. That's what we're looking at now. Looking at about almost 48 hours worth of activity. Now, today is day 15 since my 14-day watch for South America was issued. And 14, 15 days ago, two weeks ago, there was a big, deep earthquake down below South America, prompting me to issue a long-term forecast for northern South America up here by Colombia, watching for a potential extremely large earthquake up to 7.8, one magnitude larger than the deep earthquake that struck down below Argentina here. It was a deep 6.8, and we look for shallower, larger earthquake activity to come up next to the deep quake. Well, when I issued the warning that day, that night, news broke about something that a lot of people have already weighed in on over the past couple of weeks, which is this new study that came out from China announcing that the core of the Earth stopped rotating and is reorienting itself into a different rotation. <laughs> I know, it broke on the same day that night after the deep earthquake. Now, I don't know if that's playing into why we haven't seen a shallow or larger earthquake. I'm not using that as an excuse. I consider this an earthquake forecast, quote-unquote, flop when we're looking for a big earthquake to take place, and none happens. Now, something did happen in the area where we're watching. A whole spread of fives went up and around over into the Caribbean, right through next to Venezuela, through Colombia, up across Central America, but this is like a thousand times less power than I'm looking for here, okay? So we were looking for a break to happen here in the middle, and a break, or several breaks, took place following the arrows perfectly up and around past Venezuela. Here's the border with Venezuela and Colombia as an example. Meanwhile, the rest of the activity for the whole week pretty much stopped down south. Now, last night, a 6 struck right here. It came in at 6 to 6.1. You see it now marked as a 5.5. They shaved off a half magnitude off that. But something happened just about an hour before that on the other side of the plate. Another 6 struck, and it came in, and they brought it down to 5.8. Now, this is a 5.8, and this is a 5.8 to 6. In other words, it's two of the same sized earthquakes that happened back-to-back -back an hour apart, one in Japan, the other all the way across diagonally of the plate, following the fracture zone that goes right down across, over, and into South America. And that's not a coincidence. We've seen this happen many times. Activity up here, followed shortly thereafter by activity down here. Big, big earthquake activity and smaller earthquake activity like this in the 6 range. So where is our large earthquake for South America? Well, something else happened in Argentina last week, 7 days ago, 6 or 7 days ago, right next to where the deep earthquake happened softball size hail. They called it end-of-the-world style hail. People were hiding under wood wood benches and so forth to prevent themselves getting literally killed by these giant hailstones that came in. I'm not saying it's related. I'm just saying it happened next to it, and that's all we have to say. It's happened right next to where the deep earthquake happened, a rare, huge hailstorm. But then again, it is like summertime down there, so we would expect big storm activity in Argentina and along the latitudes and so forth down south, pretty similar to the latitudes up north when it comes stormwise in the summertime. Now going across, we'll get into what to look for in the next several days. I just have to bring up again, total flop on the forecast for South America, except for this all moved, marked in pink, starting four or five days ago, about a week ago. So we're looking for activity up here, and it did take place, but not like we're expecting size-wise. Then down here to the south, compensation quake, 
equals about the same size as what broke on the north over the past several days. If you took all this and added it together, it would equal about this 5.5 to 6 down here to the south, both sides of South America moving. I would now expect a new break to take place equal to 6.0 down here at our letter X at the South Sandwich Islands very soon, as well as to look for activity out by Ascension Island out here, this tiny little speck of a dot somewhere between the X and Ascension to watch for an additional near 6 to break out in the next few days. Because now we're obviously dealing with 6.0 level activity, 5's on the north side, 6 down to the south, it's going to go around both sides of South America. We'll get into what I'm going to look for and the flop on this forecast. Whenever I flop, I don't issue a new forecast until I figure out what happened in the area where we're talking. Other times we hit it spot on, so anyway, uh, let's go over to the West Pacific and talk about the spread because it's the same size. It's the same sized earthquakes as we're talking about on this side. We're talking about on this side, down to the point. So we have deep earthquakes that are raised high off the globe here or the planet, whatever you want to call it. And here is our letter D to signify where we forecast for new deep earthquakes to, stri to strike. We're not let down again. Every day, almost every day, we get new deep earthquakes down below this location. Spreading from these deep fours, we have fives that have come up and spread down to New Zealand's North Island next to Topo Volcano, fives over next to Fiji, and fives over all the way next to Vanuatu. Then, sandwiched in the middle of it all, a new 6, or 5.9. Now, how many is that? Well, there's one up in Japan. There's one over in South America that I just got done talking about down here at Chile-Argentina border. And this is the third one. And they took all three sixes, three sixes. They took them all down to 5.9, 5.8. We can't have three sixes back-to-back -back in the course of hours across the whole planet, or at least half the planet. You know what I mean? That would mean there's a relation between quakes, and the professionals cannot show you that because they are, well, doubled down and committed on saying that there isn't a relation between all these earthquakes. It's not that one earthquake's causing the other. It's that there's a greater force causing all three earthquakes that's spreading out across the whole Pacific, and it's causing three sets of sixes or three sets of 5.9s or 5.8s down in South America, up in Japan, and all the way over here at Papua New Guinea going into Solomon Islands. So really, it's a sixes worth of energy going across the whole Pacific plate right now. Going over to the west, we go over to fours and fives yet once again with a five sandwiched neatly in the middle in between all of our fours. That middle point. Think of this like a scale where we have fours on one side and fours on the other. A new five, the combined total of all the fours, breaks in the middle. Now, Ozzy, guys, my Australian viewers, look, a 4.5. Now, I don't know if you caught it, but there was earthquake activity that broke out up here on the northwest side of Australia a few days back. I think it was going to near 4.0, 3.5. Anyway, you had a 4.0's worth of energy incoming, and as we know from many past experiences, when a 4 is incoming, you look for 4's to go across the plate. The momentum is maintained, or the wave that comes into this area splits across the craton and equally distributes out across the whole plate. So I would even say maybe it could have been a 4.5 that came in, and they underreported it. I don't know. We had an earthquake up here where the arrow is. Now we have an earthquake down at Perth. Next thing to expect is a break down to the east by southeast by Adelaide going down to Kangaroo Island. Far south is, what is that, Sydney or is that Melbourne down there? Damn it. I don't know. I've never been there. Let's go see. What's the name of that? What's the name of that big city down? Hey, y'all, what's the name of that big orange city down there? Melbourne, okay, there it is. Uh, Sydney somewhere else. It's over here. Sydney's over here on the right side, or the east side. All right, sorry. <laughs> ah, bogan since they call me down there, you know. Anyway, we got a 4.5 down here on the southwest side of Australia. We look for a 4.5 down here on the east side of Australia. And down here on the south side of Australia, you got some peculiar things going on down here with the topography. This is, not, this is not done by humans. Well, as far as I know, maybe not, maybe not current humans. Anyway, these are foothills. You see that? Now, you see how it goes, it goes up and goes out to a pinnacle point, and it does it on the other side, too, and it does it this way. Do you see this? This is not from farming. Again, guys, these are foothills. It's crazy, right? Anyway, it makes some kind of triangular shape there. I don't know what that has to do with anything, but it's huge. And the other side's going to get hit. Oh, well, you got got the same thing going on on the other side. Ah, ah but let's get it. Got to get out of here. Freaking me out. 
Got some weird stuff going on down there. Anyway, you got an earthquake going on one side. You're going to have an earthquake on the other. It should be about the same size. Whenever we see an incoming event, we look for the southwest and southeast to move. When it's a big push, you can also see a break in the middle. Now, when I say in the middle, it's the rough middle on the east edge of the Australian cratons, the multiple plates that make up your greater plate. But you can see it here in the topography between the green basin and the tannish yellow color of the mountains. Now, Uluru, Ayers Rock, right here on the edge of it, that's where all your breaks are happening. There's an up thrusting that's happening there, a thrusting upwards that's taking place. And it's pushing up those rocks up out of the ground, those big ranges of mountains that make up Uluru and Ayers Rock. The folding in the middle of the plate. But the folding is happening from this seismic wave that's traveling across the plate. And it's a very low frequency seismic wave. It's dropping off earthquakes hundreds of miles apart, but somewhat equidistantly spaced. That's how we're getting these equidistant spaced earthquakes. Spaced out across a huge distance, but they're all about the same size. And then the biggest quake is in the middle, like a wave reflecting back into itself. And it starts to build in the middle with what's called a standing wave. If you think of these like wave peaks, and this is the tank, it's gone down and reflected back into itself. Now, at the end of the tank is a spot for it to flow out to the north and to the west by southwest and to the south by southeast across Australia. Hence, we get a 4.5 down here while we're getting sixes up here. The flow is spreading out like a river. And then we get this equidistant, equidistant spacing of quakes again going up across Japan over into Alaska. And going out of Japan up into Alaska, guess what we have? The same sized earthquakes again. Yet once again, it's the same size down to a hair of a point of each other. And like they're in a wave tank, equal spacing. If this was a wave, you'd have a wave peak here, 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 here. And then we get into the plate and it jumps like a ramp up into Alaska. Let's look at our smaller quakes and you'll really be able to see it. Do you see our swarms? The swarms of earthquakes stacked on top of each other are happening next to volcanoes. But it comes off the plate boundary and jumps up into Alaska. Take a look at it. Let's get all the numbers out of there. That tends to confuse people. The numbers. A picture speaks a thousand words. So you can see it come off the plate boundary and jump up into Alaska. But it doesn't stop there. It goes down and follows the Craton out of Canada and down into the United States like that balloon. Hey, did you catch that that balloon went contrary to the way the jet stream's blowing? Ah, you know, you know how they like to float around all over the place. Went up, went down at 10,000 feet, 20,000 feet, 60,000 feet, 80,000 feet. Flew around our nuclear reactor here in St. Louis. A nuclear spot flew over my house. It did. Went right over us to the east by about 5 or 10 miles at the most. It went over the Weldon Spring Nexrad radar and nuclear storage site. Anyway, they shot it down, no biggie. But we have an equal distance spacing of earthquakes going out across the plate. I don't know what that has to do with the balloon other than the quakes are coming in from the same direction from the northwest. And let me get a USGS plate boundary map to show you. This is just from the professionals. They don't have the arrows or anything on here telling you which way to watch. But what you should be able to see on the USGS map here, going around the outside edge of the Pacific plate, the spacing. This is just today's quakes from the USGS. So again, think of this like a wave. So wave peak here, 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 comes up to a pinnacle, and then is pushed down in the United States, and then we get the equal spacing on the quakes again. Here, 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 coming in from the northwest. Now these are just the USGS reported noteworthy quakes. If you look at the last two days, it really shows that. Let's get all the numbers out of there again. And you can see it come in from the northwest. It's almost pointing like an arrow to the east by southeast. Right in the middle of our arrow, going down, bordering the edge of the North American Craton. Craton, I talk about it all the time. I've shown it for 10 years. It's one of my biggest discoveries that earthquakes are going from the northwest, going down through Texas, back up through Oklahoma, back to the New Madrid seismic zone, and eventually up the east coast. Speaking of the east coast, Ohio just had a big train derailment over here right here along the border of the Craton, or on the Craton edge along the border of Ohio and Pennsylvania, right there, right where our arrow is. The Craton may be shifting, which could cause train derailments. We've seen this in the past, and they totally ignore this. 
that there's shifts that happen and that the trains derail and so forth. We've seen it many times in the past. When the craton is shifting, all of a sudden, a bunch of train derailment, derailments along the edge of the craton. A bunch. I say, like, you know, there's multiples that happen. It's not like it's just one. So the earthquakes are creeping over to the new Madrid seismic zone. We don't have anything on the east coast, but where I would look is where the train just derailed. And vinyl chloride was burning, or vinyl something. Liquid vinyl of some kind. Okay, all right. Now, before we get into looking up the earthquakes in the United States, I do just want to quickly run over the earthquakes over in Europe for my European viewers. I know a lot of you are tuned in and you want to know what's going on. You don't want to stick around with me clicking through all the U.S. quakes. So let's just quickly go over and jump over into Asia and Europe. Coming out of China, look what we have. I'm going to sound like I'm repeating myself because I am. Same sized earthquakes. Class, listen to me now. Hear me later. Same sized earthquakes going out across China that are the same sized earthquakes that are going out across Asia, or I'm sorry, across the West Pacific into Asia, going across Japan up into Alaska, and going in Central and South America, down to the point. 5.0, 4.7, 4.8. The only thing missing here now is a new 5.9. <laughs> in the middle, in between all the current sets of quakes, which will put it up here in North India, going into China and Afghanistan, a new 5.9 should be incoming, where the rings are overlapping, just where all the rings are overlapping, which kind of puts us right here, just west, northwest of Nepal, or into the Taklamakan Desert in China. So that's what we're going to look for there. Same size quakes spreading out already. Once we get over past this point, we have a big open zone in Iran, Pakistan, Afghanistan. That's the three countries right here at the center. Iran is on the west side. To the north, we have Turkmenistan. I would look towards Turkmenistan, going all the way south right here to our arrow, from the border here down to the arrow, for a new break to take place that could also be equal to 5.9. And they just had a 5.9 last week over here in Iran caused major damage hundreds killed international community ignoring them because of the status of international community versus Iran or Iran versus everybody else I don't know but they got ignored by the rest of the world the 5.9 not not by me I issued a warning for a 5.9 last week for Iran I don't care about politics religion or anything man this thing like okay like I understand everybody takes politics and religion very seriously which you should but what good is politics and religion if you don't survive the freaking earthquake that you could have known about if you would just shut up long enough to listen about the quakes, you know? So, warned them for a 5.9 this past week, but I warned them for it here, and instead it hit here. So I was way off, hundreds, a thousand, a thousand miles off on my warning, but I was down to the day, down to the magnitude for Iran. Well, it looks like it's going to happen again, but this time it looks like it's going to be up here by Turkmenistan. Okay. Or was it flipped? Last week it was, I warned there, anyway. Going to the West, over into Europe, we're going to expect a new 5.9 as well. Let's get all the smaller earthquakes out of here. Just look at the bigger ones. There we go. So, notice anything about the spacing of the earthquakes? First of all, like bookends, we have a 4.9 on one end and a 4.7 to 4.9 on the other. I think that originally came in at 4.9. Anyway, two bookends of bigger earthquakes, and in the middle we have two smaller quakes. Guess what's going to happen in the middle in between the two smaller quakes? The combined total of the whole thing coming across. The new 5.9 should be striking here. This goes back to Rhodes, to the previous 5.9 that I issued the warning for last week, two weeks ago. Two weeks ago, warned for a 5.9. Five days later, 5.9 hit. Where do we warn? We warn here. We're going to warn again. Same spot. Well, uh, hold on, hold on. We actually have to go slightly north. Right along the coast here. So that puts us north of Rhodes this time. I think the difference is about 200 miles. Okay, so if new 5.9 there. Then we have to rewarn Italy again now. It's pretty obvious there's a bunch of smaller earthquakes going up into Italy. You see the twos, so forth, going up north next to Florence. You see twos north, Slovakia going, Slovenia up north towards Austria. And then over to the west, we have zeros, ones, and twos going along the Pyrenees, going down to Gibraltar. And the Canary Islands also going. We have to talk about the Canary Islands in a second. 
But here we go. So Italy, it's obvious the earthquakes are coming up the plate boundary. We're going to watch between our current sets of earthquakes. Let me show you the plate boundary in Italy. Make sure you can see this. We go up into Italy. It dead ends up into North Italy. The earthquakes are going right up to the dead end of it. But we don't watch at the dead end. We watch between all the current sets of quakes in Italy. That puts us into the Adriatic Sea, Central Italy. The magnitude on this should be about one magnitude less, I think, than what's going to be striking down at Greece and Turkey. So that puts us to 4.9 to 5. So a new 5 is incoming into Italy, right to your east. Now, if it strikes in the ocean, it shouldn't matter very much at all. Maybe some damage along the coast on brick walls and stone stack walls. That's about it. But if it strikes on land, it's a big deal with a 5 in Italy. We've seen 3s take down buildings in the past. 3.6 took down buildings in the past and caused fatalities. Just because of the shallow nature of the earthquake, I suppose, and the structure that collapsed. So I have to warn there. Time frame on that is 7 days from now. Now, let's get into the U.S. and Hawaii. So, Hawaii, guys. Now, have you guys noticed since Mauna Loa went... The rest of the volcanic activity worldwide has kind of gone kaput. I guess that's a German word for, like, bad or something. Here, let's go uh, open up the Volcanic Ash Advisory Center and just hit refresh and see what we've got. So we have all our regular suspects on the list. Nothing huge going on right now either. So no big blasts and no new volcanoes. But going down the list, Sabankaya, Shivalush, Subanizajima, Popocatépetl, Fuego, Semeru. Semeru looks like it's one of the biggers of the bunch at 17,000 feet. That's not that big. Considering itself, it's like 12,000 feet high or something. Ebico in the Kuril Islands is back on the list. I'll show you where these are. Currency over in Indonesia. Doesn't look like there's very many others. Shivalush again uh, several times up in Kamchatka and Currency again getting us into uh, the eruptions from two days ago. All right, so let's go look where those are. First of all, Mauna Loa is right here in the middle. We'll get back to that in a second. But the eruptors, which are erupting up here at Kamchatka, we have Shivalush and Ebico. So a preference of two volcanoes side by side right there erupting. Down to the south, Suwanizajima is at the south tip of Japan and the islands right here. Further to the south, we get into Semeru, which is the only one on the list for Indonesia, which is highly irregular. We've seen 14 different blasts across the Indonesia area in a single day from 14 different volcanoes. <laughs> so, one, that's way low, volcanic. Getting passed over all Vanuatu, all of Papua New Guinea, nothing. We have to go over to Central America to get the rest. That's Popocatépetl in Mexico. Cotopaxi and uh, Fuego, well, Cotopaxi is down to the south, but that's not on the list today. Fuego right here at Guatemala, and Sabancaya down here in Peru. Okay, those are all the regular eruptors, but that's low, 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 low. We've seen it way bigger, so what's going on ever since Mauna Loa? This list has gone through the floor, and I mean next to nothing compared to where we've been in the past. People used to say that getting a 50,000-foot-high blast every week was normal. Remember? Skeptics came over and said, oh, this happens all the time. Well, here we are, like, months now. So what's going on? It could be that there's been a shift. Well, we know there's been a shift. The core of the Earth stopped rotating, right? Either electrically or physically. I would say both. I would say the electrophysical rotation of the Earth is reorienting, which should change everything pretty soon, but... I don't know if it'll change the direction and flow of the plate boundaries. There might be new plate boundaries that form. Who knows? Nobody knows. According to Michio Kaku. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. So, what happened? Let's go in and zoom in on Hawaii and take a look at where the current earthquakes are happening. Well, Kilauea rebroke back open. You guys know that. Of course, it really started to go in earnest. Earthquakes started to creep over to Hawaii Volcanoes National Park leading me to want to watch over at Pu'u'o'o. The earthquakes went over to Pu'u'o'o, but as far as I know, nothing else happened over at Pu'u'o'o, which is spelled P-U-U-O-O, -O, in case you're wondering. Pu'u'o'o Volcano is where we would watch for an additional break 
if one was going to take place at another volcano in Hawaii. So far, Mauna Loa and Kilauea both have gone over the top and done their thing. The rest of the earthquakes are down along the coast of Pahala, and there's an undersea mount out there called Loihi that we hardly ever get any news on, but I'm not even going to worry about that. Seismic is what we're going to walk watch for over the next few days to go back up. Why are we going to watch for seismic to go back up in Hawaii? Well, for the same reason we're seeing seismic go back up here and two new volcanoes going up here at the same time. If you take the volcanoes, two volcanic blasts. I would say that equals about a five, maybe two fives at the most. Take the fours, add them in. We're certainly at a 5.0 level worth of energy released up here. Now, you can follow this like a trail, like an arrow, pointing out of the Kamchatka region and it comes down and goes to the Hawaiian island chain. The Hawaiian island chain branches off and goes out to Hawaii. Dead ends into Hawaii where there's a fracture zone that goes east, you can see, goes over to the United States and Mexico. Now there's another line of undersea mount. You see it. it goes down to the south, carries on, goes further, carries on, makes a bend, carries on, goes right down in the middle of Peru. We'll watch Peru down here as well, right at the tail end of where this goes in for a new increase to take place up to, well, nobody should be shocked, mid-level 5, just like what's going on down to the south in South America. But anyway, that path goes back to Hawaii. Hawaii is going to see an increase up to 4.9, 5.0. So a new 5, or 4.9, will be coming in down here, most likely next to Pahala, in between Pahala and Kilauea, I would think, on the east side of Mauna Loa. But when we're talking a five in Hawaii, pretty much have to warn the whole island. It's only like a couple hundred miles across at the most. And I'm trying to get it down to 200 miles. Why are we warning you for a five? Well, I don't know. Maybe the rest of the planet should tell you what's going on with the five spreading out and the 5.9s. It's just pretty obvious. If you're dealing with a flood that's going up to five feet and you're along the river, you would expect about five feet of flooding by you too, wouldn't you? Unless there's something that's going to divert it off. And, that, and if you're along the channel that's been diverted, Mother Nature has done this for a long time, apparently. It's also going to go over to the east. We're going to see a new five break off over here at Baja Colombia. Or I'm sorry, Baja California. Colombia? Where did that come from? Tartaria. So, back over to Hawaii. New five due there. Over here at Baja, California. New five due here at the underwater sea base. In case you don't know about it. Now, coming in from the northwest, I don't know if we'll ever get a true picture of the earthquakes ever again coming in from the northwest out in the ocean. But coming in on land, we have a new four. Now, this follows the edge of the North American craton. I don't know if I have a craton graphic to queue up here. Hold on. There it is. If only I could get this on the other screen. <laughs> Dang it. Hold on. Hold on. Let me see if I can do this. There we go. Hey, wow. You can see it on the screen. So there's the craton. Here's our earthquake coming in from the northwest. Let's get all the smallers out of there and just show you the threes. Pretty obvious. It's right along the arrow right along the craton. Now we go down to Texas and lo and behold, same size quake, 3.7 to 3.9. Down in Texas, drill point. Up in the northwest, craton. Okay? So now that you know the craton and you've seen that picture, let me get it turned off there. Our earthquakes are mimicking. Going right down, there's only a few spots to fill in. And guess what? They've already been filled in. Look. Past two days, three days, four days. There it is. So, going back four days, let's get all the let's get the numbers out of there now. And the smaller quakes. Look at the threes, for instance, threes and twos. And it matches perfectly. We go right down to Texas. We go up to the East Coast. These are threes and upper twos. If we include the ones, you'll see it's a perfect stepping stone path. We're the only spot missing. If we compare one more time, this is crucial. This plays into the train derailment, for crying out loud. 50 cars derailed, burning tracks. You're going to blame it on somebody or something. But do you think it's chance or coincidence that if we take over the last week and look at all the earthquakes and we zoom in on the middle point, 
between where the earthquakes trail off on the New Madrid and our lone quake up here off the east coast. And we follow that Craton edge. Look what's there. Let me zoom in some more. The Ohio-Pennsylvania border region, where the train just derailed, where the shifting would take place, and where we'd expect a new earthquake to take place very soon, over the next few days. That's equal to the total amount coming across, and it's a bunch of threes. Take them and add them together, equals about a 3.9. We should get something not like a four striking over by Ohio along the edge of the Craton in the next few days. Just an example. Now we can go look up all the smaller earthquakes, and we probably should, because when we look up the quakes, we can find out what's at the spots, the spots that are getting ready to move, attribute a lot of the earthquakes to their actual causes, as opposed to just thinking they're just earthquakes, that there's a reason the earthquakes are striking at several of these spots, including up at Yellowstone, for instance. We understand the earthquakes that happen at Yellowstone are happening above the magma chamber. These are all shallow earthquakes. It's a little swarm, as we call it. Any more than 10 quakes at a spot, I call a swarm. So we have a little swarm at Yellowstone. Now, this is not to be confused with the hundreds or thousands of tremors that happen every day at Yellowstone. Tremors are vibrations that are picked up. They even get assigned a magnitude. However, these are actual earthquakes, small breaks that are now taking place above the magma chamber. Doesn't mean it's going to erupt. This happens regularly. We've had a 7.5 earthquake next to Yellowstone back in the 1950s. No eruption at Yellowstone, obviously. So you can get big earthquake activity around Yellowstone and not have to worry about an eruption. It's a sign of the craton shifting again. One more time, craton guys. Look at the edge of the craton in the northwest. Look what it goes over. Look up in Idaho, up in the northwest. Yellowstone, right where the big black arrow is. So Yellowstone is right along the edge of the craton. That's not a coincidence. It's a weak point, a seam between the hardest point of the craton or the plate and the deformed edge that gets bent and contorted by this seismic wave that I'm talking about that all the professionals somehow miss. So a swarm at Yellowstone. Swarm goes down to small earthquakes, down by the Tetons, and south by the oil pumping operations. There's a thousand, well, 10,000 different drill points south of Yellowstone. Let me show it to you. Down to the drill points. Right down next to here. So earthquake happening over here next to Afton. And if we go right along through here, you're going to see a bunch of little square pads carved out of the ground here. These are all different wastewater disposal wells. They're also using that to extract oil and gas at the same time. By disposing of the wastewater, it goes down, left in the well, breaks the shale apart, and the oil and gas comes up through the water. They get it. Anyway, the, we get, it's just the whole valley here is drilled and I'm, I'm not kidding I'm not exaggerating when I tell you the whole valley has been drilled just south of Yellowstone every one of these okay and you see how far it goes on you have to know what to look for but once you well, I mean again once you figure out what to look for you can find it it goes right up to where the earthquake is or right next to it again just a few miles and when you have the whole valley drilled like this here's Yellowstone here's Jackson Hole and all the drill points okay Earthquake right next to it, no shock. Now, the earthquakes over in Idaho are directly above the deepest part of the magma chamber for Yellowstone. Yellowstone comes up to the surface. We all know that over there at the park at the Wyoming border. However, over to the west, the magma chamber goes down below all of Idaho, and the feeder for it comes from below Washington, Oregon. So really, the center of the magma chamber is here, down below. The earthquakes are happening up above it, and we're right on the edge of the craton. So what happens is a flow comes in from the northwest. We start to get a perturbance above the magma chamber or maybe even in the magma chamber itself, and we start to see bulging or cracking or breaking up above it. Hence the earthquake swarm at Yellowstone, hence the earthquake down at the drill points down to the south, and the little outbreak that's taking place in Chalice. Usually this is followed by more significant sized earthquake activity that goes up a few magnitudes from where we are. If we're at 2.8, we could go up to near 5. We already had a four up here just last week. Just remember that. Over to the west, northwest, up in Washington. Washington. Is it Washington or Washington? Huh. 
Washington State. We can go look up the quakes. Let's do that. We'll start down to the south. Pull the one. Is it a one? That's a 0 0.6. Small microquake activity. Where are these microquakes taking place? Let's go take a look. Come along with me on a voyage of discovery. On the SS Dutch. It's like the SS Minnow. I'm like Gilligan. There we go. I'm certainly not the professor. We've got a professor. He's down in California. This guy's great. He needs to be put on a deserted island. <laughs> Just kidding. Okay, here we are in the middle of Mount St. Helens. We're right here at the crater. We're at the crater. Let's turn on the terrain so we can get some depth on this damn thing. Wow, what just happened there? Oh, okay. So, here we are. We're at the bulging crater inside of the center of Mount St. Helens. Don't worry. It's not going to erupt, at least not right now. I would expect thousands and thousands of earthquakes if it was going to erupt like this. If, they were, if this was a stack of thousands of quakes, I'd be on here talking about potential eruption. However, it's not. It's just a bunch of small quakes. The perturbance, same thing that's perturbing slightly Yellowstone. This is way small for Yellowstone. But it's still proof that something's coming in on the edge of the craton. The earthquakes, if you were to trace this out, point like an arrow down to the edge of the craton. Literally, if you did connect the dots between the quakes in Washington, through Idaho, down to the oil pumping operation, back up through Yellowstone, it makes like a check mark or an arrow shape. That's how, why we have arrows on there to begin with. This happens every week this way. Sometimes greater, sometimes less. And when it gets locked and stops, that's when a break happens that's bigger. In this case, it's going pretty slow, so I'm expecting something a little bit bigger to come in. Five level. Just like all the others, expecting a five. So I just showed you Mount St. Helens. What about the other spots up here to the east by northeast? What is 22 kilometers east northeast of Ashford, Washington? Anybody know? Survey says Mount Rainier. The volcano. Let's go look. How could I have known, right? I've looked it up enough. I know that 22 kilometers away from there is this. So we're right below the crater again. But this one's Mount Rainier. Doesn't mean it's going to erupt. But look at that. Look at that crack right across the center of the glacier. That reminds me of the crack across the center of Mauna Loa. All right, anyway, there we go. So our earthquakes are striking at Mount Rainier, Mount St. Helens. What about the third spot up to the east by northeast? Which one should we pull? Let's just pull an earthquake from in the middle. Entiat. Entiat. Entwa. Yes. I, I wouldn't even know how to say it. For crying out loud, don't try and tell me either. I'm from Missouri. Good luck. Oh, hey, look where we are. What do you know? You guys remember this place? See the high voltage power lines? See over here along the Columbia River? Get down here, we got a hydroelectric generation station. And the power lines that come off of that go right up here, right next to where the quakes keep hitting over and over and over again. There is a relation between the high voltage transmission lines, the power generation stations, not just hydroelectric dams, but also nuclear power plants, coal fire power plants, solar power plants, transmission of electricity. The electricity is in low frequency itself, and the power lines along the surface aiding this electricity in the plate, which is a seismic wave, to follow it. And we get earthquakes next to them over and over again, all the way across the country and around the world this way. Wherever they're using low frequency trans transmission of electricity, which is everywhere, pretty much. So if you follow the power line, you find it over in Japan, you'll find it over in China, you'll find it over in Russia, earthquakes, you zoom in, boom, power lines. Even in the middle of like Siberia, I'm not kidding. Same with the nuclear power plants and the coal-fired power plants. Rare earthquakes. I'll give you an example. I hate to get sidetracked, but over here on the East Coast, okay, earthquake started striking right over here along the Great Lakes. Zoom in, right next to coal-fired power plant. Earthquake right out in the Great Lakes. Uh, down here, Virginia, Mineral Virginia, 6.0 earthquake struck, caused damage on the East Coast several years ago, 10 years ago. Mineral Virginia, Cuckoo Nuclear Power Plant right next to it. Lake Byron. Or no, Lake Anna. Lake Anna nuclear power plant there. Uh, another example, rare earthquake struck here over next to Chicago, very rare. And it was west of Chicago next to Naperville. And right there at Naperville is the nuclear power plant for powering Chicago. Examples here in Missouri, central Missouri. Now you might think, ah, new matter at seismic zone. Anyway, 
Central Missouri, right next to our nuclear power plant, Fulton, Missouri. A discharge into the ground of electricity that's actually inducing earthquake activity to come to it. It's not causing the quake, it's bringing it to it. Bringing the wave to it. So it's not technically causing the quake. It, they're not discharging enough energy to cause a quake. They're emitting a low frequency into the plate that's attracting the low frequency wave that's already traveling through the plate, I think. Can't prove that yet. Someday, maybe I will. Now we can skip over all of Oregon. No earthquakes reported in Oregon for one day, two days, three days. We have to go back three days to get earthquakes reported in Oregon. Let's go see what's going on there. What kind of earthquakes are getting reported out of Oregon? Prospect, Oregon. Ah, the gold mine. Ah, nothing go wrong there. Small earthquake next to the old gold mine. Okay, well, we don't even need to look that up. We all know, oh, and this one's an explosion, so no big there. Oh, wait, it's not a quarry blast. It's an explosion. What happened? Did somebody's house blow up? Let's go see. Quarry blasts get listed as quarry blasts, just so everybody knows. Explosions are different. Well, there is a quarry nearby. Maybe it was a surface blast. I'm blowing up some blowing up some rock. Okay, if I find a quarry nearby and I've got an explosion, I attribute it to the quarry. We could throw that one out. What about the 0 0.5 over to the east-northeast? Mount Hood. Anybody know what Mount Hood is? Ever hear of it? It's a volcano. It's a volcano. Let's go zoom in on it and go take a look, see how far away from it we are. We're right on the foot of it. Here's the greater strato volcano. Here's the unnamed outbreak point where this is a lava flow that flowed out at some point in the past. And we're right on the side of it. Hey, look what's there. High voltage transmission power lines. And these are not the kind that go to your house. It's three sets of huge transmission lines. Now, I wonder if we were to trace this back where that would go to. Kind of hard to tell there, right? Power line to the north. Hydroelectric generation again. All right. Hydroelectric generation coming down now. Maybe there's some other nuclear that's there nearby. I doubt they have nuclear there. I would think they wouldn't have nuclear next to the volcano. So we can rule that out. That means, what do you want to say? I mean, you'd have to tell me that it's just chance that it's happening all over the place this way. Now, the small quake, there's nothing to worry about. It's a small earthquake. It's just a sign that the man-made location there, the transmission line, is aiding for the seismic flow down in the plate that's electrically induced, but very low frequency and flowing. And the earthquake drops off there along the way. Along the way where? Along the way over to the east. Now, going down through California, you got twos and threes out off the west coast. I don't think we're getting an accurate picture of the earthquakes reported on the west coast out off the, in the ocean, which is somewhat inhibiting me on forecasting. That if I don't get a good view of what's going on out in the ocean, the chances of me knowing what's going to be coming in on the land are pretty hard. Just like the weather. If they shut off the satellites out here and didn't let us see what was out in the Pacific, and the radar was shut off and you couldn't see what was out here, good luck trying to do forecasting. You'd have to know what the conditions are all the way up in Alaska, right? If they cut out all the information here off the West Coast, you'd have to look further upstream, right? So we know there's fives coming in. And if they don't report the earthquakes out off the West Coast, like I don't think they are, I'll tell, oh, let me explain why. National security. Since earthquakes can be forecast, and if you get a good report of earthquakes in a spot that's sensitive, what's stopping, let's just say, somebody who wanted to surveil us from pulling up off the West Coast and just waiting for the earthquake to hit? Just pay attention to my forecast, for instance. Or not even mine. They would have people who are more efficient and could do it better than me now that I published the method. And so you give, like, the Chinese or the Russian, for instance, uh, tell them that, you know, hey, look, a new five is going to be hitting on land down here in California, and we can tell by the earthquakes out here off the coast. I would think we'd stop reporting the quakes out here off the coast so that people couldn't know. Overall, we know five is going to be coming into California, and the way we determine our spots to watch on land is by looking between our current sets of earthquakes and where they're pointing to. 
So I'm going to warn Southern California for a new 4.9 to 5 to come in all the way down south by Salton Sea in between the whole cluster, right where it's all pointing to. But because I don't have any earthquakes up here to go on out in the ocean, I have nothing to base any warnings on for the northwest at all. But I think that's deliberate. Another group that could benefit from knowing on earthquake forecasting, a nefarious group that the, they might cut the earthquake so that we couldn't do forecasting for the west coast of the United States, would be drug and human trafficking. Drug traffickers and human traffickers could also use the information, wait for an earthquake to hit, and while everything's in a state of disarray, move across where they're, wherever they want to. So enemies of the United States, foreign smugglers, thieves, a thief could wait and wait for the earthquake to hit and strike at a spot they want to strike on the West Coast, break into a spot, got a five forecasted, for instance, down to a small area, basing it on the earthquakes out here in the ocean. So no, the government didn't get to me. Men in black did not come talk to me and tell me this. I came to this conclusion on my own. Why would they want to hide earthquakes out here off the West Coast to prevent forecasting for the West Coast? Thieves would benefit if they knew. Enemies could invade if they knew. I mean, we could prepare if we know, but getting everybody to change their opinions and their ideas at this point is pretty, pretty much impossible, I think. So I think that's why they're not reporting the quakes out off the coast. This all started when I stood up against a professor who said earthquake forecasting was impossible, and I issued a warning for a six to strike out here at the pinnacle tip of this fracture zone, the Juan de Fuca, the Blanca fracture zone. He then weighed in and said, it's impossible to forecast earthquakes. Two days later, a 5.9 hit the pinnacle tip of here. That professor who ran the whole network up here for the Northwest, he ran the seismic network for the Northwest, providing data to the USGS. He then weighed back in and said, there's so many 5.9s that strike out here every month that forecasting one is like shooting fish in a barrel, quote him. But right after that, the reporting of any significant earthquakes out here pretty much stopped until I say something. If I say something, all of a sudden, earthquakes start coming back on the feed here just to make it look like there aren't, they aren't hiding the quakes. And I would say they would hide the quakes. At first, I thought it was professional credibility and ego that was playing in and that they were hiding the quakes because of ego. They didn't want to admit they were wrong. And they didn't want forecasting to be done for the West Coast so that to do that, they have to hide the quakes out here off to the Northwest. You would have to literally believe that 6.0 earthquakes stopped out here completely for the last eight years, six years, seven years, however long it's been since we got into it, me and the professor who ran the network up here. I mean, which is it? Did the earthquakes completely stop up here to the Northwest out in the ocean? completely for six years, ever since the day we got into our debate just by chance? Or is it a matter of national security and they don't want people to issue warnings for the West Coast because then our enemies, smugglers, thieves, would all know when to strike? Or is there ego involved preventing that, the warnings, preventing the reporting of the quakes? I, I can't come to any other logical conclusion other than it's being deliberately hidden, guys. The earthquakes didn't stop out there off the coast. Threes, fours, fives, and sixes? Couldn't have. Seven years? Yeah. No, no, no. There's something wrong. Now, let's look at the quakes. How are we coming to our determination of a five down in Southern California? There's two lines of quakes. One, along the coast, San Andreas. We all know about the San Andreas. Line of quakes points right down along the coast, all the way down to here, a place called Lompoc, California. Additionally, there's a line of earthquakes going along the California-Nevada border. It branches out, goes over into our nuke test sites, down here in southern Nevada, and then branches out further over to the east, following our arrow into Utah. So one direction is flowing down and going over this way to the east. The other is going down and maintaining on the San Andreas. We're going past Parkfield. We're going further down to the south. Guess what's down here at Lompoc, where we dead end into, at the dead end of the San Andreas? Well, I will show you. Let's go open our coordinates from the USGS, put them in on Google Earth, and go show you where the earthquakes go down to. One more time, here on Earthquake 3D, line of quakes, San Andreas, we go down, and boom, we kind of nail down to the south with a 1.4. What's there? Take a look. Take a look at this. Do you see? It says Acorn and Lompoc, but 
right here, starting right here at the foothills. We go up into the foothill and our oil, wait, wait, there it is. All of these are oil wells. Let me zoom in and see if I can get the shadow of a jack of a bump there. There, our famous shape of an oil well, a jack of a pump, a, the pump part. Now this is all drilled all the way around Vandenberg Air Force Base. It goes down to the south and back around this way, out into the ocean to our two offshore rigs. Oil and gas. Okay. That's where we go down to. So we're going down the San Andreas. We're derailed to the south. Now there's one lone quake over in the east part of the valley. Let's go check this one out. Porterville, California. One over in the east part of the valley. So we're going down south. That's why I'm warning down south. All the earthquakes are pointing down south. Two lines of them. What's this? A quarry. Wait, is this a quarry blast? It's at a three kilometer depth. Nope. Okay, we can rule out the quarry. Or can we? What if it's a deep mine going down three, three kilometers? I doubt it. Is there anything here next to this? Oh, wait. That's right. There is something right here next to this. Right up here. This. See this ring shape? This is a collapsed lacolith. A lacolith is a bulge in the plate that happens when magma intrudes and causes a bulge. It's not a meteorite impact crater. We have an intact lacolith right here at coarse gold that's still bulging. This one here. This lacolith is directly across from our super volcano, Long Valley Caldera. Giant lacolith bulge on one side, super volcano with a thousand cubic kilometers of melt on the other. But down to the south, this one has collapsed. And just south of there is our earthquake. And just east of there is our other, what I consider to be caldera, which is a crescent shape of volcanoes that's made up of Golden Trout Creek, Red Hill, which is just an older version of Golden Trout Creek, two side by side, same shape of volcanoes, Templeton Mountain, and Monash Mountain, two of the same size and shape volcanoes, and Brown Mountains, the oddball out, makes a crescent shape down here, one side. And on the other side, you have Soda Butte making three quarters of a oval shape. There's only one spot missing, and that's the southern part, and we have this. My viewers found this. Another bulging lacolith in the mountains itself, causing the mountains themselves to bulge into a dome-like shape. And this is an ancient caldera. And they, the USGS doesn't have anything marked here. They say this is just a river. Ha! No marked fault. Meanwhile, it goes right up to our super volcano. All right, so earthquakes going along it. Be surprised? Earthquakes coming down the San Andreas, no duh. But then we jump down to the drill point and we jump over to next to the lacolith. Now, the earthquakes along the California Nevada border are all at volcanoes. Well, I'll, I'll say 99% of them are directly at volcanoes. So, for instance, this whole cluster here between Lake Tahoe and Pyramid Lake is directly at and around Steamboat Springs. So we have a cluster of earthquakes north of Lake Tahoe, south of Pyramid Lake right here, and here is the marked Steamboat Springs where the humans have drilled in to get geothermal energy. These turbines are all over the place here, drilled in to the field, to the volcanic field that's marked by the Smithsonian there. And that's where our quakes are. But there's something here aside from Steamboat Springs. I have to back it out for you to see it. Let's turn off our places, borders, labels, all the gobbledygook. The giant oval shape here, the caldera, in between Lake Tahoe and Pyramid Lake. This thing is lined with its own volcanoes around the outside edge. I've talked about this a million times. The earthquakes go around the outside edge of this thing. We have two folded basins on either side and two geothermal fields, one, the needles at Pyramid Lake, the Tufa deposits and geothermal field there, and Steamboat Springs. And they're somewhat spaced out equally as well on both sides of this. The giant caldera that every professional missed where all the earthquakes hit. Fires break out there too. A whole bunch of fires always break out there every year, or almost every year. Now there's a giant ring of earthquakes, or do you see it? And in the middle, a little cluster of earthquakes. 
Let's go in the middle and then show you what's all around the outside edge. One more time, indisputable, big ring of earthquakes here that goes right over to the edge of our arrow. All these down here we'll get into a second in South Nevada, but I'm interested in this giant target shape of quakes with something in the middle. Benton, California. I wonder why there's a giant target shape of earthquakes with something right in the middle. Let's go look it up. Come along with me. There we go. What's in the middle? Mono Lake. Mono Lake. Also, Aurora Peak, Aurora Bodhi Crater, and Mud Springs Volcanic Butte. Lava flow and so forth coming off that. But So, right there in the middle, you see it, right? And we have a big ring of quakes going all the way around it. One more time. Over to the east, let's go pull. What's over here? A 3.3. Notice they just have it listed as Nevada with no town to triangulate from. Usually when they do that, there's something to hide. Let's go take a look. There we are, zooming in on the earthquake epicenter. I don't see anything at the epicenter itself except for a bunch of old volcanoes. Am I missing anything here? Hold on. Yeah, that's all we've got. We've got the Monte Cristo Hills Volcanic Buttes. Now, there's a surface fissure fracture that formed across these buttes. I don't know exactly where. 6.5 earthquake struck two years ago, three years ago. Big crack in the ground formed here. And it went over across from Monte Cristo over to these. These old quarries. Let me see if I can find them. Eh, they're somewhere over here. Yeah. Spread over to these. These old Tartarian quarries from back. We're supposedly, these are supposedly only 100 something years old. Ha! <laughs> right? Anyway, um, the earthquake struck there and a line a crack went right over to those and then another earthquake struck next to them. That was two years ago. So that's our spot to the east. The spot to the south by southwest goes over into California, down into the valley here. I shouldn't even need to tell my longtime viewers what's there. I'll just show you. South by southwest takes us down to here into the valley. What's there? Well, we're south of the super volcano, of course. We're right on the edge of another volcanic field, Crater Mountain and Big Pine Volcanic Field with all its lava flows and smaller buttes, spatter cones, and so forth. That's where the quakes go down to the south, right through there. Now we spread out across pretty much all of southern Nevada. You see that there. Now in the middle here, let's just pull the zero from very center next to Beatty, Nevada. And go see where this no nothing quake is. It's a 0, 0.0, guys. Nothing happened here. The computer has reported in and told us nothing is going on here. Isn't that good to know? Little quarry there, but it's not a quarry. Look, these are all underground nuclear test sites. Every single one of them. The crater in the ground, that's not from aerial bombardment, guys. U.S. nuke, Operation Baker. 3.5 kilotons on October 28, 1951. Just one of just so many. U.S. nuke Operation Transom, undisclosed kilotons on May 10, 1978. U.S. nuke Operation Bullfrog, 150 kilotons, August 30, 1988. Anyway, we're right next to there. And again, this is not a quarry blast. This is at a five kilometer depth. There's some going on down below. That's at the center. Now the nuke sites go to the north, to the west, and to the south. To the west, northwest, let me show you. Here are the more recent nuke test sites where we did Operation Jefferson, for instance, on April 22nd, 1986 with 150 kilotons. We let the French and the British come over here and do tests over here in this site here. And that's where our quakes are to the west, going further to the west, northwest, and all the way out over to the far west. See where it says California, Nevada, border region. You go right out over to here, and there's a few further test sites going back. I, I don't know how far. They don't, there's no place mark information on those over to the west. Google Earth community is pretty well, accurate. Well, 
actually more than pretty accurate. They've got a lot of information. They don't have it all. Anyway, that you can go zoom in on the site and see it. You can see the spot where they did the blast and so forth. It's not up for debate. You can go check it. Now, I don't know what's all the way over here on the far, far east side. Alamo, Nevada. Let's go pull the coordinates there. This is the only one where I don't know what's there directly. On the far, far east. Oh, okay. All right. It's not that far. Range 61 volcano. Here's Area 51 in case anybody... In case you don't know about Area 51, there's Groom Lake and the whole wonderful thing there. Here's the nuke sites over in the valley over to the west. And Range 61 Volcanic Buttes, earthquake striking right on the other side. Isn't this also a surface range test site? I could have sworn it is. Hold on. No. No. All right, you got people living out there. All right, well, earthquake striking down below the area just to the east of Area 51. Is there anything else here we need to know about? What's this? Power lines. Ah, great, great. We got the high voltage power lines passing through the middle of the desert out here right next to the quake. Look at that. So, again, we're not talking about power going to your house. We're talking about the big power lines moving very low frequency over a long distance. I wonder if there's some kind of power generation going on up here. It looks like we may have some geothermal, some kind of spring activity in here. That would make all the greenery here in the desert. Usually where there's geothermal, they also have some kind of power generation. We could probably trace the power lines back to their source. That might take a little while. Going through the middle of the desert like this. Anyway, we're right next to the transmission lines out in the middle of the desert. I don't know. Look. There's a volcano to the west in Area 51. There's a set of power lines a couple miles to the east. Which one do you want to put it towards? There's no marked fault there. The earthquakes to the south. Let's go take a look here. Pull one from right in the middle. Indian Springs. This is where they did the surface nuke test sites. Down by Doomtown. The famous Operation Rise Line location. Let's go pull up the coordinates. Go see how close we are. Oh, we're directly at Doomtown. We're directly below Operation Rise Line, the town they blew away on the surface with the surface nuclear test site. That's the spot to the south. I think I proved my case. All these earthquakes are striking directly around our nu nuke test sites with one striking next to the power lines. All man-made faults, being excited by the incoming wave that's traveling across over to the east. What's over in Utah? Not nukes. We go back to volcanoes. So we go volcano to nuke test site to volcano. What do the nuke test sites and the volcanoes have in common? They're both surface fracture points. One's created by man detonating huge devices underground. The other created by Mother Nature punching up from down below. So, for instance... Here's the earthquake epicenter. Pa past fours and threes, striking on the north side of Black Mountain Volcanic Butte with its old lava flows going down the hill, old black basalt flowing over the hill. And it's on the edge of this, the Markagunt Plateau with all of its ancient lava flows. Some more recent, <laughs> no trees on them at all. This broke out on the side at some point in the past. The side of what? This. The old butte that hasn't erupted in a very long time. The old butte hasn't erupted, tree covered. On the side of it, it broke open at some point in the recent past. Recent being a few thousand years or less. And flowed out at least in one direction this way, to the south. Then another break happened, and another flow flowed out. That's on one side. Looks like it happened on the other, too. Looks like it happened over here. Look at that. How high is that? Hold on. 100 feet. That's a 100-foot high lava flow or more. 200 feet. Wow. 200 feet. Flowing over the mountaintops. Imagine that. Breaks out up here. Looks like it broke out up here and flowed downhill, obviously. And just literally gooped up and flowed over. And ridges. Look at that. Imagine what that was like to see. A 200-foot high lava flow coming over a mountaintop. 
All right, anyway, that's where our quakes are. One lone 1.4 up in Utah. Clear Creek, Utah. Let's go see what's up there. Probably a fault zone. Be the one lone fault zone quake out of all the other volcano and nuke test sites getting hit. So why are all these spots getting hit? Listen up, class. The reason the spots are getting hit, they're predisposed to be hit because they're weak points. This wave that's going through the plate seeks out the weak points, cracks in the plate first, as opposed to the solid, more stable portions. What's going on right there? Oh. What the? What the heck is that? Whatever it is, it's well hidden. On purpose. Okay, what is it? Well, let's go down to the entrance and see if they have a sign. Unmarked. Anytime you find something like this, you have to make note of it because you get an earthquake next to it. Worth paying attention to just in case. Let's see what else we have here nearby. Looks like we have a little bit of... Well, that's river and lake. That's not a quarry. Or if it is, it's been deliberately filled. Hashtag Tartaria. We got a dam built down here. So they did deliberately fill that. I say hashtag Tartaria because they do the lakes to hide stuff. The entrances to places, the old structures, the old castles, the old forts. They do it to hide it. Who's they? Who's they? There is a they, I found out. This is the craziest thing. There actually is a they. Let me get a sip of my coffee. Oh, my God. I found out who they are, too, and you're not going to like it. I can't tell you here on YouTube either. Uh, it's bad. Anyway, so that's where our quake is. Now, let's recap. Line of earthquakes coming in from the northwest, hitting at all the volcanoes. Mount St. Helens, Mount Rainier. Going further to the north up into Washington. We looked at all those already. Volcano, 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 volcano. Going over to Yellowstone. Volcano, volcano. Down to the south, we go down California's coast on the San Andreas. We jump down to and jump off of the San Andreas going down to the drill points. Same time we jump down to the drill points, we jump over to the Lacolith. To the bulge in the plate in the little volcano over there. A oh, oh, big volcano. Along the California-Nevada border, volcano, 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 down to the nuke test sites where we branch off to another volcano. Southern California, here we come. What's going on down south? That's where our warning's going, down by Salton Sea. Salton Sea, we're going to watch for up to 4.9, 5.0, just like the rest of the planet. Into L.A. and around L.A.'s basin we go. What's going on out here along the coast? Go pull the 2.0 along the coast. Port Henemy. Henemy. Hunemy. Huenemy. Huame. My God. The English language. Ah. Hey, isn't this where you... Oh, yeah, it is. It is. This is a spot where people were saying that there was something going on out here. You guys remember this? There was an underwater pipeline break out here off the coast, and then people were pointing to this and saying there was some kind of underwater base of some kind that's being deliberately hidden and blurred out on purpose. Well, it is being deliberately blurred out on purpose, and it is flat, and it is along the west coast, and it is next to the Navy base. So, this. See that? What is this place called? Naval Air Station Point Mugu or something? Mugu. Point Mugu. Yeah, we got the naval base right there. You got the thing out off the... Ah, ah, bunch of canyons and stuff. They would never build an underground, underground underwater submarine base. That's some James Bond level stuff. They, we would know about that. They would tell us for sure. They would certainly tell us where it is, how big it is, and how to get to it. And they'd make it public so everybody could go. Right? Let's go down to the south and go across. We're following the San Andreas again. 2.9. Let's go pull it. It's almost it's actually a fairly noteworthy earthquake for Silmar, California. Uh, the 400 felt reports on this quake, so it had to be 
Actually, a little bit of a shaker. Let's go see what's there. Oh. Ooh. All right. This one get, opens up some talk. Right here, high voltage power lines, first of all. Big, huge transmission lines. But now we are in L.A. People are going to say, ah, I know, all over there, L.A. All right. All right. Well, what about this? How about all the fires that broke out here? You remember this? This mountain right here. I don't know if we have the mountain name on it. I don't think we do. You see, I've got fire clear day, August 3rd, 2020. A big fire broke out here and went all the way up the mountain. The whole side of the mountain burned. Tried to blame it on somebody's flying wheel or something. A flaming wheel off a motorcycle or something. Now, the earthquakes that keep going to this spot are what we have to talk about. Why do earthquakes keep seeking out this spot? Do you see what this is? See, it says fracking oil drilling operation. This is actually a gas storage location as well. And a series of earthquakes broke out here. Going back, I want to say it was like five or six years ago. A series of earthquakes started to creep over towards this spot. And I made note of it. I talked about it. I made videos about it. And the professionals weighed in. Uh, Dr. Lucy, somebody weighed in and said that the oil pumping operations and the earthquakes are not related to one another because the earthquakes are happening down below the pumping operations. They haven't drilled down that far, so they're not related. Thinking that I'm just talking about the drill points themselves causing the quakes, that you can't break from those points, right? You can't break down further and come up to those spots, they say. Well, they dismissed the earthquakes that were striking in this valley. Now, what's the name of this place? Let's zoom in and see. Wait. It's not marked now? They removed the place mark on here? Are you kidding me? This is where the big gas leak happened and the hundreds of thousands of people in northern L.A. had to be evacuated from. I can't believe the name's not on there now. Now they're calling it the Michael D. Antonovich Open Space. What was the name of it? Anybody know? And I, I really can't remember the name of it, to be, to be quite honest. That's why I want to see the name on it. What do we got going on here? Let's zoom in and see. Guard shacks. No trespassing. This is where the gas storage is. They've taken all the signs down. Okay, can't remember the name of it. They've taken the signs down and removed all the names off of it. It's the valley up here in North LA, north of LA, that broke apart and hundreds of thousands of people had to evacuate. The gas that was released was caust caustic and toxic. It wasn't just natural gas. It was natural gas with some kind of other chemicals in it, either naturally or put into it. And it caused instant nosebleeds and other things in the hundreds of thousands of people that had to evacuate when it broke apart after the earthquake struck there that the professionals denied. And literally they denied it. Now we got a new 2.9 or 2. Point something. Yeah, 2.9 right next to it. I can't believe it. I mean, I can believe the earthquake struck there. I can't believe they would ignore the quakes originally back five years ago. Don't ignore it now with earthquake striking there and Southern California getting ready to get hit. Why is an earthquake striking there? It's a drill point, it's a weak point. There's a wave passing through the area. It's gonna seek out these weak points as it goes down to the south. That's why we're getting threes going all the way down to the south. Once we get down to Southern California, this diagonal line of quakes, I need to show it to you on the USGS fault zone map. So back to the USGS red line map we go. Down to Southern California, here we are. And I need to turn on faults and you'll see three distinct sets of faults here one is the san andreas the thick red line going down to the imperial fault the other is the san jacinto and the elsinore fault now look at the earthquakes wouldn't you say they're preferencing the san jacinto a little line going around the san andreas on the east side and the elsinore kind of remaining somewhat quiet compared it's focused it's focused on the middle it's focused on the middle it's going down to the south pointing almost like an arrow itself, a rough drawn arrow or an anchor shape pointing down to the south. 
That's why I'm watching down south. The reason I'm watching for a five in Southern California is the same reason I'm going to watch for a five down in Baja. The same reason we're watching for a 4.9 to 5 in Hawaii. This gets us back to the start of the update with my big flop down in South America. Nobody felt that big deep earthquake, in case you didn't know. Nobody felt it. So we're just going on the honor system with the agencies as to whether or not that was an accurate deep earthquake to begin with 14 days ago, 15 days ago, the deep 6.8. I'm not saying it's fake, the deep 6.8. I'm just saying nobody felt it. We have to go on the honor system as to whether or not it actually happened or was a 6.8. We have to go on everybody else's stations and this and that as opposed to evidence of a large quake. So did it hit? I don't know. I would think yes. The deep earthquake did happen. Did we get a shallower, larger earthquake within 14 days? No, we didn't. We got a mega hailstorm right next to the deep earthquake location and some fives and a 6 last night that they downgraded to this, 5.5 here. That's it. For the last two weeks, there have been no significant earthquakes anywhere on the planet since the deep 6.8, not one. So, a couple sixes in the middle of nowhere, which they downgraded to 5.9s, as I showed you in this update. So, no significant earthquakes in two weeks. So much for there being big earthquakes every week, like the skeptics said. You know, they, they, they said, oh, big earthquake. Sixes happen every week, three a week. Well, here's two weeks with none and no sevens. So you can't say sevens happen every week. You can't say sixes happen every week because here we are two weeks and we're going 5.8, 5.9 game. And I consider that somewhat of a game. Now, I will get a new forecast together, but I'm not going to be doing it now. As many of my viewers know, I like to do forecasting region by region for the full planet. That'll take another 30 minutes. This video has already gone on. God knows how long. Way too long. We'll go ahead and get the display capture turned off. We've been recording now for an hour and 17 minutes. So I can quickly wrap this up by telling you, no big earthquake. Don't let your guard down. But with the core of the Earth and the rotation changing, whether it's an oscillation change, electrical, or whether it's a physical change, rotation, we don't have any other things to go on on this. 70 years ago, they said it happened, supposedly, according to Michio Ka 70 years ago, supposedly. Okay. Anytime people start talking supposed, I just have to watch. Observational science is just that. We watch and see if anything changes. So if we start getting big, deep earthquakes and there's no follow-up, before I accuse the professionals of faking the deep quakes to be jerks, that I would think that maybe that Mother Nature's something's changed. 12 to 15 years of watching, well, 12 years, 12 years of watching and getting the same results, and then all of a sudden it stops? That would not, that's odd. That would be an oddity in its own right. So, could people fake deep earthquakes? You bet they could. They could totally fake it, put it on the, on the feed, especially if it will only one agency or two agencies uh, collude or report the quake. If we pick it up around the world, it's a little harder, I would say, to fake a quake. Could it be projected? Could you project the seismic signal without actually inducing a quake to fake earthquakes on seismographs all the way around the planet? Could you do it with satellites, for instance, and beam it down? Maybe. Maybe. Technically, right now, I'd put it in the sci-fi category on that. But as we know, many people are 50 years, many countries are 50 years ahead of what we know to be technologically possible. So rule that one out if you can. Do you have an earthquake plan over in Italy? Do you have an earthquake plan? Looking for a 5, 4.9. Over in Iran, do you have an earthquake plan? It means knowing what to do when an earthquake strikes, no matter what time of day it is. If you're asleep, it's going to be different than if you're awake. If you're asleep, you're going to need to go for the nearest place to take shelter underneath something. The chances of realizing the quake is happening, jumping up out of bed and running outside or whatever you're going to do. If you're overseas, they tell people to go outside because of the structures. They can collapse their stone stack or cinder block or cobblestone stack or shanties. They fall over and the people who are inside get trapped or killed. So they tell their citizens to run outside and cover their heads. So if you're going to try and run outside, do you have a set of slippers or shoes by the side of your bed? Or even if you are inside here in the United States, 5.0 range quake hits, you're asleep in bed, things fall and break across the floor and 
the power's out for a little bit, a few seconds or a few minutes, and you got to go navigate in the dark with no shoes, with broken stuff on the floor. Wouldn't it be better to have a set of slippers by the side of your bed you know you can easily get to? Here's another thing. Look around your bedroom. Do you have anything big around your bed that could fall on you when an earthquake hits? Shelves with things on it above the bed? Maybe nice decorations? What about armoire cabinets over next to you? Dressers and those things that are somewhat taller that can fall over. Knock and fall over in front of a door and prevent you from getting out the door. You can stop your furniture from falling with zip ties. Easily screwed into the back of furniture and then screwed into a stud on your wall. So you could do those things, but look around your room. So if you're asleep, it's going to be different. If you're awake, at least you're going to be able to be mobile and get underneath a table or a desk to protect yourself from falling things. That's what's recommended, table or desk. If you're not confident in your structure, that's where going outside comes into play. And then you get into a whole host of worse issues, I think, personally, which is things that could be falling from further up. 100-foot fall, 20-foot, uh, things falling out of streetlights, losing their lamps, or uh, wires falling, or natural gas line breaks in the ground, or a sewer line opens up, or something. It's just it's so many things. You've got to know your area. So please, please, guys, come on. Just know your surroundings. And then finally, this is the thing that every person can do, which is to have an emergency kit I don't sell any of that crap. I don't even know where to begin to tell you to go get it, other than you could probably get a lot of the disposable things you need at the dollar store and just replace them every few months, every six months in your emergency kit to have your winter and summer versions of your emergency kit. And then you just go to the dollar store and restock up with the you know granola bars and stuff to eat. Uh, a food situation does need to be taken care of for disasters as well as water. And power, batteries, food, water, clothing, first aid, and medical, and anything else you might need. Cash and IDs and stuff to barter with and all that stuff. I don't know. It starts getting into a whole, like you need a whole supply shop. But with the emergency kit, the change of clothes, set of shoes, water, food, you should be able to do it into a backpack and have it ready to go. Just have it over off to the side. Don't go stack it up in the top of a closet that's hard to get to put it in an area that you can just grab it right when you're going out the door you can even disguise it and have it over off to the side some people have a lot of stuff some people have a little if you're a single person it's different than obviously if you've got a family think of the kids think of elderly you might even want to have some extra stuff just in case somebody comes stepping to come take it or so you can be generous and prevent somebody from coming stepping to begin with when you come stepping is a <laughs> come stepping is a U.S. scientific term to describe what happens when people freak out and come and rob you. They see you have something that they need and they don't want to pay for it or barter. It's called come stepping. All right, let's save this as a video. It's been going on now for an hour and 23, 24 minutes. I will upload to YouTube. We will watch back if anything develops. I've already issued a few warnings. Those warnings stand, but my new forecast will be out tomorrow. It'll address the miss down in South America, the flop, whatever you want to call it. I'll beat myself up real good in the forecast, and we'll try to figure out what happened. Word up. Much love, guys. Be safe.